Welcome everybody to the annual New Zealand Law Foundation Dispute Settlement Lecture given this year by visiting fellow Adriana Bragueta from Brazil. We're delighted to have Adriana here. Some of us have had the good fortune already to hear some of her insights at a luncheon today co-hosted with Bankside Chambers. She's speaking this evening uh, and if you are interested she's also speaking tomorrow morning at an Eamon's breakfast meeting. So I'd like to introduce Adriana, tell you a little bit about her before she begins. Adriana is one of the leading lawyers in Brazil in the field of arbitration. She's a partner and coordinates the arbitration division of the Brazilian firm Batista Schmidt Valois Miranda Ferreira Achel. Spanish accent. I thought I'd give it a go. <laughs> she has an impressive legal career, both in litigation and in arbitration. And she's acted as counsel and arbitrator in numerous national and international arbitrations. She also teaches arbitration at the International Institute of Social Science in Sao Paulo, as well as lecturing at several other institutions. She's the current Vice President of the International Council of Commercial Arbitration and was President of the Brazilian Arbitration Committee from 2009 to 2013. She's a member of several esteemed committees, including the ILA International Arbitration Committee and the International Chamber of Commerce Arbitration Commission, and she's a leading authority on arbitration in Latin America. She's even found time to write a book on the importance of the place of arbitration from a Brazilian perspective. She holds a doctorate from the University of Sao Paulo in the year 2008. Before commencing, I would like to reiterate our thanks to the New Zealand Law Foundation uh, for their support for this project, uh, which is <coughs> carried out in partnership with Victoria University of Wellington. If I could ask you please to welcome Adriana Bragueta. So first of all, thank you all for being here. You could uh, have stay with your families and friends or drinking a beer. And uh, we, uh, we are here, you are together with me for us to exchange a few ideas. Obviously, before I start, I would heartily thank uh, Carolina Foster for this invitation and also uh, uh, Petra Butler uh, for the uh, really nice invitation to come to give you this lecture to, tonight. Uh, I'm extremely honored by that. Uh, uh, this initiative, I understood correctly, and now you mentioned that it's a joint initiative of the Auckland University and the uh, University of Auckland and the Victoria University of Wellington. And uh, I hope y you keep on bringing different uh, uh, people from around the globe to share th uh, thoughts with you. And I hope we can do the same in Brazil. It's, it's really interesting for us. The uh, New Zealand Law Foundation not only invited me, but I would like to thank again uh, Carolina for, uh, for funding my trip to New Zealand uh, um, again extremely honored. Uh, <clears throat> I realized, where is Nina? Here, because Nina will make some comments after my presentation. Uh, I realized, first of all, that this lecture was created in 2012, and that before me, at least, two other women presented, Lucy Reed and Catherine Rogers. This is impressive. Let me go back. This is impressive, as we are going to discuss tonight the issue of diversity. It shows to me that at least Carolina and uh, Carolina and Petra they pay attention to uh, this important subject nowadays. Obviously, I'm part of the subject. I'm a woman, and I am from Latin America, a developing country. Uh, <coughs> the subject of my speech why I chose this subject. I believe that nowadays it's, it's an essential debate that we need to have from this moment on in the coming years if we want to guarantee the legitimacy in international arbitration. So far we did very well, but we have a lot of work ahead of us. The world has changed significantly in the last 35 years, with, you all know, and you are all part of that, 
globalization. We are all connected. We exchange products, ideas, money, and experiences globally in an incredible fast pace. We are more plural. If we want a well-accepted international dispute method, it needs to represent all this plurality, all this diversity that we can easily perceive. Otherwise, those new players that we will talk about in a while, they will search other tools to solve their disputes. We are not talking about gender issues. We are talking about race, especially my area of concern, nationality, age, obviously, and also participation of non-lawyers in these methods that we have chosen to solve the disputes, that is arbitration. Uh, the common arbitrator, and I, I will focus my presentation on the, uh, uh, on the arbitrator. I will talk also about the ones that are uh, acting as counsel. But the common arbitrator is male, white, mature, a lawyer, a lawyer, and from a developed or Western country. Is it uh, a problem? Not at all. But we will see that with the increase of cases, we will have to, to deal with some difficulties in the future. The first time that this issue of diversity was discussed openly was in Miami recently, last year, 2014. We had two main streams in our program in ICA Miami. We had uh, uh, a very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, 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 touchable issue that is precision in arbitration, proof, and other issues that are uh, involved in the uh, work of uh, uh, working a case. And then we have uh, a philosophical discussion about legitimacy of arbitration as a system. Why we, de we decided to discuss this issue of legitimacy? And it has to do with diversity. Because as you all know, arbitration is receiving some criticism. And we need to face those criticisms. We need to address those criticisms. We need to look in the eye of, of the problems. We, we, we need to face them and overcome. Otherwise, what is going very well so far uh, will not go in the good direction in the near future. Let's, uh, <clears throat> and, and before also I, I jump into some uh, statistics that I want to share with you. I also uh, wanted to mention a little bit what uh, especially Albert Jan Vandenberg and uh, his predecessor, Jan Paulson, are doing within the uh, ICA. ICA, I, I, nowadays I'm currently the vice president, is an academic institution, uh, does not administer proceedings. Uh, it, it, it's a well-known institution that used to have only 45 members since it was created just after the New York Convention. It was a group of 45 friends that were doing arbitration in Europe. So they were normally, as it would be, predominantly mature, white, male European arbitrators, and primarily professors and lawyers. In a few years' time, Albert Chan and Yen Poulson, they realize that we are in a different world, that ICA had to open to these different nationalities. So first of all, ICA is open to everybody nowadays. Everybody can be an ICA member. Uh, it has more than a thousand members. You probably you're following a little bit the work of ICA because you will host together with uh, uh, Australia, you will host ICA 2018. It's the, it's the uh, most important arbitration conference that we have in the world each two years. And what happened is that Albert Jan 
and the and, and Yen Po, so they changed everything. Within this 45 that used to be the only members, they are the governing board members nowadays. Uh, we have lots of different perspectives. First of all, we have various judges. It's very important for us, counsel in international arbitration or arbitrators in international arbitrat arbitration, to dialogue with judges. We have corporate lawyers. It's truly important uh, to see the perspective of the client. It's not, uh, it's not useful for us, counsel and lawyers and, and arbitrators, to talk only uh, for ourselves. We have lots of Latin Americans, lots of Asians, and also David Williams from New Zealand. And, uh, uh, and we have nowadays lots of Africans. It's an incredible uh, uh, group of people with highly different uh, experiences and uh, uh, allowing us at ICA to have a unique experience. So let's try to analyze a little bit. I just mentioned the, what the, the diversity that ICA uh, has achieved. Judges, corporate lawyers, women, various generations, Latin Americans, Africans, and Asians, and Pacific nationals. And let's, uh, to, to, in order to address the issue that I want to address with you, let's analyze a little bit uh, the information that we have. First, uh, first of all, this is a chart. It's an ICC statistic from 1999. You can easily see that arbitration, modern arbitration, is something quite new for everybody. Although we have some institutions like LCAA with more than 100 years, and ICC with almost 100 years, obviously arbitration develops as the economy develops. Between the two world war, there was no cases. The number of cases in the scenario of arbitration, we start to rise from the end of the second World War and onwards. And we can also see that at the end of the last century, ICC, one of the major institutions, was receiving roughly 500 cases per year. ICC is receiving nowadays 1,000 cases per year. We can also see the growth of the cases when we, you know, we analyze the ICSID statistics. In the beginning, after 69, you know that uh, the ICSID conventions from 69, the first case in 72, and few cases for a long period of time. And then the number of cases will start to rise from 97 and on. They have a total number of 525 cases. Not only uh, there was a growth in certain institutions, and obviously, uh, if uh, uh, we look at the LCA numbers, we will see also a growth. Uh, I, 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 would, I would also like to mention that there's, there's a huge increase of new institutions in the last decades. Dozens of new institutions. So what we had uh, 30 to 40 years ago, it was like three to four institutions. Nowadays, we have dozens. We have uh, uh, ICDR within AAA. We have uh, three great Brazilian institutions. We have uh, Hong Kong International Arbitration Center doing an extraordinary job. We have SIAC, Singapore International Arbitra Arbitration Center, doing a very good job. We have CETAC. We have uh, also institutions, we all know, Sweden, Italy, Peru, Belgium, Colombia, Spain, Chile, many other places. So we can easily see that we have a few cases 30 years ago. And now we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases going on. Uh, the pool of arbitrators, though, remains very close. 
Uh, and what we can see is that there is still a level of centralization towards North America and Europe. If we pay attention again to some ICC statistics, we will see that 30 years ago, Europe was responsible for not talking about uh, 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 East Europe, but Western Europe was responsible for 62% of the cases, 91, 63% of the cases, a large number of cases. We will see a great change in this last 30 years. You, you, we, we may also pay attention to, for instance, Pacific, less than 1% of the cases in 91. Africa, the percentage of participation is very little. Asia is still very, very little, and it grew a lot, as we all noticed in this past few years. So this is another uh, uh, information given by the ICC from 2013. What we can see, there's a breakdown in relation to all countries. What we can see, if we pay attention to North and West Europe, they represent nowadays, within the ICC numbers, only 30% of the cases, 33% of the cases. There's a huge increase of African cases, uh, Latin American cases, and Asian cases. I, 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 I imagine that Pacific remained roughly the same in relation to number of cases. Although you have a large participation as a, a, a number of arbitrators. So what we can see uh, uh, between these two dates, 23 years uh, 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 apart from 1990, there was a large percentage of European cases total. 23 years ago, we have a totally different situation. But, but, obviously, again, Asia grew a lot. Americas grew a lot, but because of the Latin America that enter into the world of arbitration, but what we can see that in relation to the nationality of the arbitrators, they roughly remain the same. What it tell, tells us that in relation to nationality, we are using uh, still the same pool of arbitrators. We, the, here it's another uh, information, it's a very recent one also, just to show that the uh, percentage of arbitrators that we have uh, uh, worldwide uh, in relation to ICC cases, the vast majority, almost 30%, would be from United Kingdom, Switzerland, France, US, and Germany. It's quite interesting to see that Brazil is playing an important role now. It's still not so important as the number of cases. Brazil, incredibly, has become last year in 2014 the third jurisdiction in relation to ICC cases, just after USA and France. Uh, uh, if we have time, it's interesting to understand why other Latin American countries are not doing so well in relation to LCIA arbitration. We are doing uh, uh, very well in relation to ICC arbitration, but not, I would say, English arbitration. And uh, just also to introduce the thing to you, the, the issue of this diversity became so important that for, for the first time in this ICA Congress of 2014, we, we, di we did a research uh, 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 at the conference, in local, with everybody, there was a unique opportunity to discuss with the practitioners of arbitration what is going on, what to, we need to do in the future. Uh, there were a thousand uh, attendees to the uh, Miami ICA Convention. 500 of those answered the questionnaire and what we could see from the answers reinforces what we have seen from the ICC statistics. 70% of all are men. 
uh, in relation to the ones that are arbitrators, that are arbitrators only 17% are women. The rest is men. And also it shows that uh, 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 women in, in international arbitration is, is younger than men. Reinforces what we've been discussing in, this, in the last slides. Another, another interesting information, obviously, I will send to you all afterwards. It will be, uh, you, you can easily assess that. The uh, major countries, the major, uh, uh, the major uh, uh, arbitrators or the elite arbitrators, where do they come from? Europe, North America, 69% of all the cases. We could keep on talking and discussing information and statistics, but I chose to pick up only two others to show you interesting information. First of all, it was asked for everybody that was attending that said they were sitting as arbitrator if they had at least in their lives worked with one developing world arbitrator in their entire lives. And impressively, I would say, 40% said never. Although we have a large percentage of cases involving developing country, 40% of those cases never had the participation of a developing country arbitrator. And in 38%, which is a large percentage, only in few cases, there was a participation of one person from a developing country. Interesting uh, uh, also to see that uh, when asked if uh, you have had the opportunity to sit with uh, two developing country arbitrators, then the, uh, the answer is quite eloquent as well. Everybody said no, 60% so no. We never had the chance. Why so eloquent? Because uh, in this it's ICA conference, there were hundreds of Latin Americans, because it was in Miami, close to Latin America. Even so, the numbers show that there was a lack of proper representation of uh, uh, regional players. Again, in relation to gender, what we could see, uh, there are other information, but I chose this one to uh, uh, exchange with you the, uh, the, uh, 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 what they have collected uh, in relation to a participation of women as arbitrator. 32% said they never had a case, they never sat with a, a woman in their, uh, uh, in their uh, uh, arbitral panels. In, in a large percentage also said in only few cases I have sat with a woman. So what, I, what, I, what, what is the result? What we can see from every data that we have uh, for the first time collected in 2014 that we were perceiving in the last few years is that obviously that the majority of international arbitration practitioners uh, uh, agrees that there is an issue of diversity. That was a question presented to us all, even the Europeans, male and white people, even the Northern American white people. What do you think about the issue of diversity? Do you need to address this issue of diversity? And the majority strongly agree and somewhat agree, would say that we are talking about 56% uh, 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 said yes. There's something th that we need to do. It's also interesting if we, if we make a big breakdown between women and men that large, more than, a, more than half of the women that were there would say we strongly agree that there's something to do. Men don't believe that is the case. Only 20% of the men said there's something that we need to pay attention to. So 
half of the women said there's something to do. More than 76% of the women and a large percentage of, the, a percentage of the men. So this is the diagnosis that I wanted to present uh, 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 to you. And then we can move on to discuss the importance of diversity and what to do in the near future. These are the findings of the ICA 2014 research. Overall, overall the median ICA attendee and depression council was a male, 50 years old, with some uncommon law legal training and from a developed state. Overall, these results suggest that women's presence in international operation was relatively small, and the proportion of developing world operators was relatively small. The data reflect, reflected arguably disproportionate levels of representation by men from states in North America and Europe, which have high levels of economic development. Ultimately, the data supported rather than disproved claims that international operation is a white male game. It's, it's interesting to see that uh, what we have discussed uh, a lot during this ICA Congress is that uh, what's happening perhaps in the arbitration world is that the parties keep on choosing the same names a sort of insurance policy. I will go for the big names. I will go for the ones that have been sitting for a long time in international cases. I will go for the, uh, uh, the ones that everybody knows. Why is that? Because if something happens to my case, if I lose my case, uh, if I am a, 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 a lawyer, an officer, and a firm, nobody's going to say anything towards me that I did I made a wrong choice so it will be an insurance policy but uh, uh, <clears throat> I would say that uh, uh, the insurance policy aimed by the parties is perhaps not working as expected mainly because the problems that we are seeing in international arbitration and even in domestic arbitration. Lack of availability, low quality of the decisions, increasing cases with conflicted arbitrators, very hard to find a proper panel, and obviously a need to increase the quality of the arbitral decisions. If we are facing at least some decisions with poor quality, we need to address those issues. Otherwise, a company that has chosen arbitration at a certain moment and has no, no option to appeal from a wrong decision will never go to international arbitration or, nev or, or, or national arbitration again. So, uh, Darius Gambata, one, uh, uh, one of the speakers from our panel, he is from India, he made a very good quote that I think shows everything that we want to say when we are talking about diversity. It's if everybody is thinking alike, then no one is thinking. Benjamin Franklin. What we want, obviously, what we want to have is access to different ideas and to different backgrounds. As an example, in a construction case, it's probable that a participation of an engineer, depending on the case, will enhance the quality of the decision, the quality of the assessment of the evidence, and then the quality of decision. As Peter is here, in an, in an IP case, sometimes, obviously, an specialist on IP makes a total, a total difference in the case. So not only we are talking about gender, nationality, but sometimes we are choosing our arbitrators, only lawyers, and they are handling bad decisions because they don't know the industry. They don't know the specificities of a certain uh, dispute. <coughs> 
I would, I would also like to, uh, to quote what uh, Johnny Vidal mentioned in one of this, his uh, writings about this. It will be a waste of human resource if we don't pay attention to diversity. Uh, interestingly, last Friday, uh, the Vice President of the International Court of Justice, uh, the Vice President of the International Court of Justice, Abdul Kwak Ahmad Youssef from Somalia, he gave a speech about the same issue that we are discussing. Obviously, because there is a huge pressure for African countries to participate in international arbitration. Why is that? Because our clients want to invest in Africa and want to have a proper and safe <coughs> forum to solve their disputes. But uh, Mr. Yusufi, the, the, the Vice President of ICJ said, if you don't invite the Africans to be part of this system, if you don't invite the Africans to see these arbitrators, they will reject the system. That is, that is the risk that we may, we may face in the future. So I think we have two issues. Obviously, we have the issue of diversity to bring new people and bring fresh new ideas and enhance the quality of the decision. And we have another issue to discuss is the race of cases and the needs, the uh, uh, important need that we have to extend the pool of arbitrators uh, uh, to be able to rule on all those cases. Uh, uh, it's important also to say, just to finalize one or two minutes, that I think there's no, uh, there's a consensus uh, that we should uh, stimulate diversity that it's, it's, it will be good for the system, diversity, but not at any costs. Obviously, we are talking about arbitration, we are talking about a method to solve disputes with, without any possibility to appeal from a wrong decision. So experience and quality are crucial. We need to find the right people. We need to find the diamonds in each jurisdiction and help them raise for us to be able to choose from other countries. We also need to preserve the essential stone of arbitration, which is party autonomy. We don't expect, even from me, myself, Adriana, when I'm sitting as counsel, we don't expect me to foster diversity. When I'm sitting, is when, when I'm working as counsel, obviously what I want is to win the case. I will try to locate an arbitrator that is appropriate to my case. So, but what, what we can do, and this I invite you all, and Nina, I invite you talk, to comment on what we need to do in the future. I think the institutions have a major role, every institution. The institution need to, play, need to prepare the new generations. The institution needs to talk about this. Obviously, I think when we talk about diversity, uh, one of the main uh, issues, one of the main solutions, awareness. As much as you talk, we think about the issue and we pay attention to the, to the diversity issues. Uh, but w I think the institutions should have, should, if they have a list of arbitrators, they should have, they should select a, or, 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 or a, f a few spots they should dedicate to young and brilliant lawyers, women obviously, and people from all over the world. That's what, what we are trying to do in Brazil nowadays especially in the main Brazilian institution that's called CCBC. Obviously, I think, uh, as arbitrators, uh, we need to think about diversity issues whenever we are choosing the chair. Obviously, we want to learn from the chair, but in cases that we have a very experienced co-arbitrator that usually sits the chair, it's a unique opportunity to uh, invite someone from a different region, to invite someone new, to prepare this person for other cases. And finally, 
uh, the system will survive as uh, uh, the arbitration system will survive if our clients are satisfied that they have received proper justice. Nowadays, the clients are not only mm -hmm. European companies and North American companies, but are companies from all around the globe. Our clients themselves, they want bigger lists and new experienced and prepared names. It's our job as institutional as institution or as, as a responsible protectioner to reach that and to give bigger lists to our clients. Thank you very much.